Good morning and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I've had to kind of taken a little work break, I think. Did I? I feel like I did uh, lately, but I have one last bigger project that needs to get done. And I think I'm going to tackle it. I know I am going to tackle it right now. So let me take you through it uh, a little bit. <clears throat> I don't know why I have been putting this one off for the last two or three weeks. I just haven't been able to motivate myself. One, I kind of um, burned myself out on the fence project. And I was like, I just need a big break after that. Because that came right at the at uh, following the green room, this green room, the parlor project, which... I still, I'm happy with the results, but the process was just such a headache. Anyhow, I needed a little break. So I took a little break, but I, I want, this is the last thing I need to do, which is to paint this entry hall. So let me show you what our before is so that when I get it done, we can all ooh and ah at the improvement, I guess. I don't know. Um, I've got my painting clothes on. This used to be a dog walking shirt and hiking pants that I have now decided are painting clothes. And um, got my hair back, I'm ready to go. So let's start here at the front door. So here we are, front door, inside. Um, I'm not painting the door. I'm not doing anything to the door today. But what I am doing, let's see if I, get some. I don't have a lot of light in this hallway, which doesn't help either. But I don't know if you can see up in there. And there are a lot of cobwebs and groaniness. So we've got to get that all cleaned. But this room is a space, I guess. It's not really a room. It's more of a space. It's this pale yellow and it's a flat paint. And it's in pretty rough shape and it had a lot of things hung on it so i got some nails to take out of the wall still and some patching to do and then i gotta paint the ceiling which i think is the other reason i have been avoiding getting to work on this is that i just painting ceilings the re end result is wonderful but the job itself is just a pain in the poop it too so all right so this is that's my bedroom door so just plain yellow walls. They don't need a lot of repair or work. Uh, there's just little nail holes that need filled. And then up above the archway here, the opening into the parlor. So there's not a lot of wall space to paint. Theory shouldn't take me long. Here is another thing that's been causing me to a delay. <laughs> is one night I was on the phone, I think with my mother. And I am one of those people that can't just sit and talk to somebody on the phone. I'm usually up walking, pacing the house, straightening things. I don't know. Well, I came in here and I found a loose corner down here of wallpaper. And I was like, oh my goodness, this hallway was wallpapered, is wallpapered and painted over. And I started picking at it. And then I peeled a big chunk and then I peeled another chunk. So as you can see, I got on my ladder yesterday and peeled more chunks. I am not going to remove all of the wallpaper from this hallway because that would add another week but i've gotten to about there so what i think my intention is you know get my wallpaper remover to make it a little easier i'm gonna peel it up to like above the window and that art that uh, pillar there and then i'm gonna patch and sand and like kind of the edge and assume it's gonna be high enough that nobody will notice it. So don't come into my house and go, oh, I see you kind of only ripped off some of the wallpaper. Also, this wall, this little section, it's like two foot wide maybe, had the most obnoxious screws and anchors and stuff in it that I had to take out. And I had to, you know, I put one layer of spackle on. I got to sand it. Of course, I got to get the little bit, little, just a little remainders of wallpaper and stuff on it. Um, so, yeah, so I've got that to do today. I've got, we'll see. We'll see how much I get done. And uh, 
I just want it. This is the last kind of public space other than the kitchen. Well, the back hall too. And I have enough paint to do the back hall, but I'm not going to do the back, back hall right now because it's kind of just a storage spot right now. There is no working electrical lights in the back hall. So it's a very dark space. doesn't have any windows, or any natural light at all. <clears throat> so I have the paint for it. I'm going to paint the same color as this hallway. I'm just not doing it right now. Another thing I have to do when I'm up on that scaffolding is to clean these transoms. All these transoms are very dusty and grimy. I did the French doors up when I moved in, but I didn't get up. So that transom and that transom are cobwebby and dusty and uh, need some work. Oh, yeah. Can you see over my shoulder? There's a little surprise. Um, I'm not showing you, I'm trying not to show you anyway, the... Um, what's going on in the parlor since I painted it because one, it's not done. And one of the reasons it's not done is because I needed, I need to get this space done to move some of the stuff out of there. And also some things like draperies and a few other things haven't arrived yet and haven't been installed. So that's going to be a big reveal, but hopefully these two spaces can maybe be somewhat of a reveal at the same time. We'll see. I also want a big, a big gallery wall on this wall behind me. And that might be a bit of a job. I might have my friend come over and help me with that. Um, but I am going to get to work. And I'm going to try to work smart, not hard today. I'm going to go get my bucket of water and rag for my cleaning. And my spackle. And maybe my ceiling paint and brush. So that when I'm up there... I can pull the nails, spackle the holes, well, wash, pull the nails, wash the wall, spackle the holes, and cut in the ceiling. And then move, get down, move the scaffolding, do the next section. I also haven't decided, I haven't figured out, I think this hallway is seven foot wide. So in theory, I could put the scaffolding across it and just move to and do both sides at once. Uh, I don't know. I'll wait till I get up there and figure it out. I know I'm going to put it across the window, the door here, so I can do that transom and above the transom and stuff. So we'll see how I feel about reaching the two ends uh, off the edge of the scaffolding. And if that doesn't feel comfortable, I also see a little corner of drywall tape up here which I have not been very good about patching and fixing in the other rooms that have that problem. Uh, but maybe, maybe I'll give it a go this time. Maybe I'll actually do it right this time. I think that's the only spot. Well, there's a little crack here, so maybe I can throw a little spackle on that crack. For all I know, they wallpapered the ceiling too. I don't think they did. I think it's just a really bad drywall job. Um, but that's a whole other conversation for another day about drywall versus the original plaster. Um, let's have that conversation anyway, while we're at it. Um, at some point, the people who did the big renovation uh, of this house, oh, I just noticed something else. Um, in the 80s or 90s, they tore out all the old plaster walls. I don't know what the condition of the plaster walls were, that they felt the need to do that. Unfortunately, when they had the walls open, they didn't insulate the walls after before they put the drywall up. Um, and I only discovered that because there was a big hole in the drywall in the blue room, in the lounge. And uh, I peeked, it was like doorknob went through it. It was a big hole. And there was no, and it was an outside wall. And I was like, well, why would you not insulate? But I digress. So at first, when I discovered that this house had drywall rather than the plaster, I thought, oh, good, because plaster can be a little finicky. It takes a different skill set to patch it, etc. A little bit different, you know, as far as anchoring and hanging things on it. Um, but then the more I've researched old houses and renovating old houses, especially down here in the south, there's a good reason to have plaster walls. They are really good for modulating the humidity. They're thicker and don't need the insulation because of just the nature of the lath and plaster kind of is insulating in and of itself. <clears throat> so do I 
feel a little bad that I don't have original plaster walls a little bit but if they were in really bad shape I appreciate the fact that they went to the mess and work of replacing them um, and I think also at that time because they when they did have the walls open all my electrical is modern and I do appreciate that a great deal I have not found one trace of an old knob and tube uh, lighting or I, I'm wondering if this house had gasoliers or gas lights at one point originally it probably it was built in 1895 so it probably had electric from the get-go but <clears throat> there are and I don't think they're original they're probably from one of these other remodels there are gas connectors at all the fireplaces so at some point they had gas either gas igniters or gas logs in the fireplaces actually this parlor still has a gas log in it I will not be connecting it and using it because I don't know the condition. Well, I know the condition of the chimney and it's not good and it's full of bird nests. So I will not be burning anything in there. But, um, yeah, so there's pros and cons. I'm just glad I wasn't the one that had to do it. So I appreciate that. Uh, and I appreciate that I don't, didn't move into a house with like delaminated, uh, plaster walls because again, that's beyond my skill set. And finding someone here that can do that kind of work, I have a feeling would be next to impossible. All right, so let's get to work on this last, I say last, you're like, Beth, you've got a lot more to do. I do, I have a lot more to do on this house, but this is my, I'm saying right now, you can hold me to it later. This is kind of my last big hurrah as far as like, getting the house to a point where I feel like it's mine, it's clean, it's comfortable, it looks, you know, when you walk in, it, it, it's it's been best. It's a new word. Um, I've made it my own, if you will. And um, then I can, I, I have a lot of other little things, but I want to get back to the other things that bring me joy, you know, in my craft room, my art room. Um, and... Uh, there are outdoor projects that I still need to do this fall. Um, but I'm ready to kind of start going into the cave for the winter. <laughs> and uh, time changes this weekend, a couple days. And I just want to be able to kind of nest and hibernate and uh, maybe get some like knitting projects or a crochet project or some sewing projects going. Um, and I want to get, I just have... I still have stuff that I need to get hung on the wall and I need to get rearranged. And this is the last thing that once these walls are ready to put stuff on, I can start doing that. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm almost finished with the ceiling in here today. And before I finish it, I kind of wanted to record here. This is the side over here that's been painted and this is the side that has it. So, there is a marked difference between the old ceiling and the freshly painted ceiling. Sometimes you get to a certain point painting a ceiling and you forget. You think, oh, is this really making any difference at all? Because once it's done, you can't tell. But I tell you, once it's done, it looks great. That's the other ceiling I've done. Ugh. Does that make me want to do every ceiling in the house? No, it doesn't. But at least these two that are the first ceilings you see when you walk in my house. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to finish this last section. Oh. Okay. So it's day three of this hallway painting project. I don't think I even videoed anything yesterday because I just wanted to get to work and get cracking. And um, so I'll show you the big reveal. I have another big reveal for you too. It'll all happen when it happens. But day three, because I did the ceiling, did the walls, first coat, did the ceiling two days ago, did the first coat of the walls, cut in everything yesterday and uh, today. I, I could have put the second coat on last night at about five, four or five o'clock in the afternoon um, and it wouldn't have taken me that long, but I was starting to lose light in here and uh, I figured I'm doing it in the morning. So here I am in the morning and the light is starting to come around to the side of the house. So this hallway is very dark. This is the only light fixture the hallway has. Uh, someday would I love to find a big, beautiful 
uh, chandelier or something to go there instead? Yes, yes, I would. I don't know if this is an original um, light fixture. I, I doubt it. I mean, it's not particularly modern, but it's also not particularly antique looking and it's a little wonky and I, I it actually looks like it's kind of falling out of the ceiling which makes me nervous i didn't bump it when i was painting so i don't i think it's always been like that anyway i mean there is all this room here that there could be another light fixture or two or i could you know modernize the space and put can lights up there but i don't know it would be nice to have a little more light in this hallway, but I'm, I'm planning to put a table with a lamp in the hall right behind me. So when I'm done here, which is one of the reasons I want to get this painted. Um, but this is the exact type of Sherwin-Williams paint that I used in the parlor that I had so much trouble with in the parlor. And now the jury's still out. It could have been a bad batch it could be that the dark base that to get the dark color is just formulated a little bit differently um but i am come to the conclusion that my tools make all the difference in the world and i know that i know that but before i did this job i went and bought when i bought the paint for this they were also having 30 percent off all of their tools and supplies so I bought a new paint brush and I don't know, that might be reversed. We'll see. Um, Purdy brand clear cut nylon brush. And it's, it says stiff, but it's a pretty, it's still got a pretty, it's, they're not stiff, stiff, but I am telling you, I was able to cut in so much easier, so much smoother, so much, so much better with this brush than the brush I was using in the, in the other rooms. Wish I had bought this six months ago. And I've had this brand of brush and I've had good quality brushes in the past. Um, I don't have them anymore. Then it is back in it. I washed it really well yesterday and put it back in its little sleeve to hold its shape. So hopefully it will, I guess maybe that's why I don't have them anymore. I had one brush that I loved for cutting in that I, it was kind of like my sewing scissors. Like I was the only one allowed to touch it because nobody else would care for it properly. That's all I'm going to say about that. But, um, I've had a couple brushes on this job or not this particular job, but this house that I haven't taken very good care of. And I had to toss because I didn't get them cleaned out properly. Um, so anyway, and I used, I had a two pack of roller covers that I bought when I did the lounge, the dark blue room. And I had the second one of that pack. That's what I used yesterday in here. And again, the rolling paint went on so much better than it did in that room. So I don't know, like I said, it was some other, just that was in my supplies that I don't know what the brand was or anything. So I do think I would have had better luck in there had I used better tools. Live and learn. The end result, I'm going to show you. I'm not today because I, I got some other little tweaks I got to do before I show you what's, what's been happening in the parlor. Um, I do have that big painting that I'm trying to get up above the fireplace and I got a screw and an anchor on everything in yesterday and I hung it and I'm still standing up there like, see, and I could just see this like hook not hook but uh screw that i had and just kind of starting i'm like mm, yep nope don't want that 50 pound painting come crashing down in the middle of the night so i didn't leave it up there and i've got a i gotta get a better solution um i mean i can't go back 130 years or even 40 years to when they drywalled this and say hey how about you put some really sturdy you know two by fours at the very least, or four by somethings up there, right up the middle of the fireplace chimney breast, because in the future, somebody's gonna wanna hang a heavy thing above this fireplace. 
and having some really good solid wood up in there to anchor it with, anchor it into, would be a really good idea. But that's not what I'm finding. It is just a drywall wall. So I'm having to, um, there's wood back in there. When I screw in with my drill, I hit wood, but not like right behind, I don't know, it's a thing. So I've got a longer, heavier, stronger screw and a better anchor, and I'm gonna try it again later. But uh, yeah, I'm just hesitant. It's just not my, yeah. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna get painting. So here is the finished front hall paint job. It looks real good. I'm real happy with it. Nice neutral color. I got the drapes up. Everything coordinates beautifully. And have a little entry hall table, which makes me very happy. A little place I can sit and put my shoes on, sit and read my mail, etc. Future project is decorating this wall into a maximalist gallery wall. And the ugly section here that was really rough shape turned out pretty smooth. Don't look at it too close. You can't see where I pulled up the wallpaper and patched in. So very happy with all that. So there's a finished look at that last big paint job that I had for right now. Here's the view from a different angle toward the front door. And a little peek at uh, some goodies I found a week or so ago. Come on, focus. There we go. Uh, I went back to Montgomery to pick up something else for the parlor and stopped at that fabric store that I got the fabric for the green room drapes and they were having a big sale. So I got these three bolts. Um, this is a polyester shantung kind of purple. I didn't get much of that, but I like the color. This green velvet they had when I was there before and I kicked myself for not buying it when I was there and it happened to still be there. So some exciting ideas for that green velvet. And then this beautiful taupey tan crinkle velvet. They had a lot of this, uh, but not enough. Well, I'd already ordered and gotten the drapes for the living room anyway, but there weren't enough quite to make the drapes, unfortunately, because look at how the match on that. That would have been lovely drapery but I bought one of the rolls that they had. They had a lot of rolls with like two, three, four yards each, and um, which is why it wouldn't have been enough for drapes. It would have had to have been pieced, and that wouldn't have looked good. So um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that, but I thought it was pretty. So maybe I'll find a little upholstery project or curtain project for these for the green, dark green parlor. So thanks again for watching. Um, I've got a bunch of videos uh, ready to go. I'm a little bit behind and I'm trying to get caught up. Uh, took a little break. So I'm going to be editing and uploading. I got new internet that's way faster than the old internet. So now it doesn't take me half a day just to upload a video once I get it edited. So that will inspire me to get moving and getting caught up. And we're moving into the holiday season. So we'll see what happens there. And also another little note, I am getting very close, um, maybe even by the time this goes up and you see this, to having 200 subscribers, which in the scheme of YouTube isn't a lot, but it's a lot for me. And I'm very, very grateful for each and every one of you. So thank you for subscribing. 
If you're watching and you aren't subscribed, I would love it if you would be one of my 200s. Um, that would be great to get me over that 200 mark. And in celebration, I'm hoping some around time next weekend, over the Thanksgiving weekend, to put together a little Q&A um, video. And so please ask any questions that you might have down in the comments below. They can be personal questions. They can be questions about the house, about my move to Selma, um, about my animals, about my decorating, my, my history, um, you know, what led me to this point and anything, just whatever you'd like to know, I would be happy to entertain answering those for you. And so uh, I hope to have lots of comments below or you can go to my Facebook page, Spiral Path Healing Arts, or my Instagram, which is also Spiral Path Arts, and find me there. The links are in the description below, or you can just comment on this video. But I know a lot of people like myself watch most of my YouTube videos on my smart TV, and so it's, I have to go get my computer or my phone and find that same video to make the comments. So if you're sitting there watching this on your on your TV, open your phone, phone and find my um, YouTube, or not YouTube, you're already on YouTube, find my um, Instagram or other social media and leave your question there. And that would be awesome. So I will talk to you all later.